Of course, the big news that just broke, and we've had a lot of breaking news recently, is the Supreme Court sending the immunity case back to a lower court. So I want you to hear a little bit about this. Uh, this is Devin Dwyer from ABC talking about this ruling being a very big win for the former president. This is a, in no short uh, sense, a big win for Donald Trump. It means delay. We already knew that a trial uh, on these charges would be unlikely before the presidential election. Now it's all but impossible based on today's decision. See, the issue here, and I want you, I'm going to let, I'm going to hear the former president in a moment react to this. This is so much bigger than Donald Trump. And I think this is part of what the nation and what the Supreme Court is supposed to do. And I don't want to get into a civics lesson or a civics conversation about the separation of powers. But this is where the courts are supposed to be more sober minded because of the implications of their decisions. First, I want you to hear the former president's response, but then I wanted to get into what this really means, what this could have in store. The former president says that this is a big win for our constitution and democracy. Proud to be an American. That is the first reaction coming in from Donald Trump to this ruling today out on the campaign trail. There is no question about it. This is big for Donald Trump because time is something that his campaign, that the former president were deeply worried about. They did not want to see this trial happen any closer to election day. And, you know, of course, now the current president and vice president are scheduled to talk about this. We'll let you hear what they have to say as well on this topic. But in the end, the American people have got to know this is much bigger than the moment. And it always is. If you if the Supreme Court of the United States says that there are things that were done in the capacity of president of the United States, and I'm being very clear, not his capacity as a private citizen, it is capacity as the president of the United States, that he can be held legally accountable after his presidency, hauled into court and convicted of crimes. It ties the hands of any president moving forward. You go back and you look at some of the decisions that were made. Um, oh, let's go back. You know, 9-11. Everybody knows I was on the, the Bush team in, when I say that, as a volunteer. I wasn't on his team. I was a, a volunteer in Arizona. Um, but I was a supporter of George W. Bush. If in the time after his presidency, people had said, the reason why we went into Iraq, there were no weapons of mass destruction, you should have known that, you did this and you did that, could he be put on trial for that? Now, there are some people that say absolutely, except you look back at the pullout, let's go to the other side of the aisle. You look at the removal of, of people, of staff and troops from Afghanistan and how botched that was. 13 Marines lost their lives in an attack. Countless others died. It was a nightmare for the U.S. Should Joe Biden be held accountable for that? Because he should have had a better plan. He should have done something differently. He shouldn't have pulled out of there at all. When the presidents have to make a decision in the capacity of president, president I think most people understand they have to have immunity. They're not immune from the vote of the American people where they can win a second term as president or not. But then the other side of this, and I think this is what the court was getting into, is the, the court is saying the lower court's job is to decide whether or not you were acting in or he was acting in the capacity of president or private citizen. If he was acting in the capacity as a private citizen that day, then there may be places where he can be held accountable. That's what the Supreme Court has to decide. It's not our job to decide whether or not he was acting in that capacity. Our job is to decide whether or not he could do that with immunity. And it's, it sounds like a very small thing, but it isn't. And for everybody out there that's upset because the president's not going to be tried before the— it's bigger than that, and it's and I'm not defending him at all. I'm just saying it doesn't matter who the president is. They have to have the ability to make decisions and do that job in real time without the worry of being convicted of a crime after their presidency. Now, if the lower court decides that what happened, let's say January 6th, that Donald Trump acted inappropriately, and Donald Trump fostered what happened where his supporters went into the Capitol and not President Trump, then the Supreme Court has to make decisions there. But was he acting in his capacity as president of the United States? So more information is coming in. Again, we're going to get reaction from others. We'll hear this throughout the morning. You know, KTAR News is going to stay on top of it, but that's the basics of this. So let's shift back to the election and, and other things that are going on because that is now starting to consume everything we do. 
Um, Arizona voter registration closes tonight. BballotReady.vote is where you can go to check on your registration. If you if you register today, you can vote in the Arizona primary on July 30th, but it's your last day. If you if you register after today, you'll be eligible to re- to vote in November. You also have to remember if you are a uh, if you are if you vote early, if you are an independent or a party non declared, you have to choose either a Republican or a Democrat ballot. If you go to the polls, same thing. They're going to ask you to decide which party's primary you want to vote in as an independent voter. But then obviously we all get the same ballot in November. But the questions are out there now about whether or not President Biden is going to remain on the ticket. This is, again, the battle for politics, and I understand the passion. I don't agree with it all the time, but I understand it. If you're someone that believes that you never, we should never have another minute with Donald Trump as president, you may think that, and you're entitled to that opinion. That doesn't mean that the court should just decide he's a horrible human being and the Constitution doesn't apply to him as president. Now, on the other side of this, for the Republicans— If the Supreme Court is to look at this eventually and decide that the president of the United States or former president of the United States committed crimes because he was acting in the capacity of a private citizen and he said or did things that that ended up causing damage and there was loss of life and there was all these other things that happened, then you have to live with the fact that the Supreme Court is looking at this and making a decision. We can't say – that the Supreme Court is great when we love what they do. What the stories now, I, I, we keep seeing the stories about the this conservative court and all this other stuff. The funny thing about this is with the liberal justices on the court, where's the complaints about them being too liberal? Where are the complaints about them um, with a, a, about sticking to a principle instead of reading the Constitution the other way? Why is it that they say the conservatives are the ones that are being bad? If you look at some of the decisions with the, with the recent decision um, uh, that was uh, that was made that was not along uh, ideological lines um, was fascinating because you had one what was known as a conservative flip over and you had one Democrat or, or liberal justice flip the other way. Why is the criticism of the justice that is deemed to be conservative? But it rarely happens from either side. So why aren't both sides held accountable for that? Why isn't it wh- 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 why and we bring you why is it that we can't hear why is it that we don't hear um about that happening the fact that you know the 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 liberal justice they loved they all loved Ruth Bader Ginsburg why weren't they upset about her allowing politics into her decisions they loved it They loved her. Documentaries and T-shirts and bumper stickers and everything else. But somehow the conservative justices are horrible. It's because they're making decisions you don't like. This is exactly what the founders, I believe, the founders did with the separation of powers. Coming to this country and living under a monarchy, living under the rule of one person. And, you know, this is, I don't want to, I'm not going to preach a sermon, but it gets a while, if you're someone that that is uh, a, a, a faithful person, if you uh, are a Christian, you know, in the Old Testament, if you read about the kings, there was joy and prosperity under good kings, and there were horrible times under bad kings. And th- our government was based on the fact that we won't have a king or a queen, that we are intentionally going to separate powers because absolute power corrupts absolutely. So we've separated the powers, and we have a Supreme Court that I don't always agree with. I certainly don't. And I don't. They haven't made a decision here. There are many people that said they should make a decision. Well, I'm not a lawyer, but if the Supreme Court said it's not our job to do this, you have to live with the decision. There are going to be a lot of decisions they make that you like, and there's decisions that you don't like. And that's exactly how our system is set up. We have to stop trying to force everybody to think like us, fight for our opinions, fight for our ideals, stand up for what we believe in, and then. When the people vote or the Supreme Court decides, we're going to have to live with those decisions. And it's a problem. It's a problem when we don't live by the separation of powers. And I think a lot of it has to do with a disdain, a hatred for Donald Trump. I'm going to say something that's going to upset a lot of people, but this is life. Joe Biden, President Biden, is the nominee for the Democrats anything 
didn't do anything to foster a real primary and give any other candidates a shot. If you remember the last time you were this angry, it was when Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton, and they did the same thing. The Democratic Party deemed her the candidate early on. They put their thumb on the scale, and Hillary Clinton walked through the nomination, basically. When you look at Joe Biden, the same thing happened here, President Biden, but I'm saying Joe Biden is candidate. They did the same thing here. There's no way that the questions that have been answered by his performance in the debate weren't known to the highest levels of his administration and the Democratic Party. But they believed that having the incumbent was going to be the best pathway to victory. You have, if you're a Democrat, you have no one to blame but your own party. This is twice Donald Trump has been running against somebody that you just figured anybody's going to beat him, and that's what you did. Hillary Clinton was the heir apparent to the White House, and the incumbent president is the heir apparent to the White House again. And that's where the problem lies for the Republicans. If Donald Trump were to lose to this president with all of the other questions, the Republican Party has no one to blame but themselves for who they put up as a candidate. I don't agree with ranked choice voting. I don't agree with open primaries. I don't agree with those things. But the reason why they have grown legs and the reason why it's become a very popular option is because the political parties have such a disconnect with their voters. The party operatives and the party leadership have no connection to their voters. Thanks for watching the Mike Broomhead Show. Catch up on Amazing Arizonans, a KTAR News podcast, and click the button in the middle to subscribe.